itself, but like somebody's um, style or delivery or persona. Like, how do how do you <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. get out like of if you're uh, what? like if uh, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, it depends. Like, if you're faking it, you know, if to. Carlos Mencia is actually a really good example in that he's this, he's not that he stole the Mexican identity, but right, right. You know, he's this big Mexican kind. He's not. He's not at all. He's not a Mexican named Carlos Mencia. In his defense, he's like, everybody thinks we're Mexican. Yeah. Well, what, I'm Spanish, what, by the way. Germans? Just saying, you can't see that. They can't yeah. see that on the face. Right. Well, what but you all look alike, right? You do. Seriously. Now, like, Okay, we we've noticed that you, you take on some some Mitch Hedberg characteristics, but we mean that all as a compliment. Mitch Hedberg, people say, oh well, he's stealing Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright, yeah. yeah. So I mean, I wouldn't worry about it too much. I would say just keep performing. You'll find yourself on stage yeah. if it happens to be like Mitch Hedberg. It happens to be like Mitch Hedberg. But however, you're most comfortable and that you're funniest. No one's going to tell you to stop. Yeah, mannerisms are a lot harder to control than yeah. like your personality. Than yeah. you know, it makes it harder. Jokes, you know. It means you have an uphill battle doing like five minute sets where people are just going to assume that you're doing it intentionally. But you see you off stage and you're still Mitch Hedberg. So <laughs> it's not like it's something, it's not like you get on stage and go, oh, I'm going to pretend to be this guy. I don't know. It's so yeah, I mean, it Mitch. ain't a fucking egg. No, I know. Like, I'm really just he's right. Bad. Mitch Hedberg is like, oh, this is just Stephen Wright on drugs. Yeah. But. He sold it. I, I guarantee you, Mitch Hedberg did five minutes of an open mic and he was starting out, and people went, "Are you kidding?" I think he stole that from Stephen Wright. Well, guarantee sad, that had to have happened. The sad thing for Mitch Hedberg is that he's kind of um, your comics comic, and he's also your like college student comic. That a lot of mainstream people don't know. And yeah. I mean, it's tragedy because I mean, he's he's a great example of a comic who really just wanted to be a comic. Like, he didn't want to do a lot of things. The sad thing for Mitch Hedberg is he's dead. Yeah, it was like he didn't, he didn't want to turn 40 either. <laughs> Who does? That might be a good yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. Sometimes it's good, good to die. style. Um, you're right at your best. Yeah, you're funny, and now you're dead. That's but I think, that, I think that, honestly, even if it's intentional, if you are, if you are aping a style, um, I don't think that's quite the same thing as joke stealing. I do think it's the same thing as our next topic. Uh, yeah? Before we move on. Yeah, no problem. The most famous example of uh, style stealing, I think, is, I'm quoting from Wikipedia here. <laughs> <laughs> the most reliable source in the planet. Uh, Better than the Encyclopedia Britannica. I went and edited this before he printed it, so he's actually just going to be quoting something I made him say. <laughs> For many years, Larry had been friends with fellow comedian Bell Hicks. Dennis Larry. Yeah, when Hicks yeah. heard Larry's comedy album, No Cure for Cancer, he felt Larry had stolen his act and material. The friendship ended abruptly as a result. Hicks one fam once famously told an interviewer, I have a scoop for you. I stole his act. I camouflaged it with punchlines and to really throw people off, I did it before he did. <laughs> <laughs> At least three stand-up comedians have gone on the record stating they believe Leary stole Hicks' material, comedic persona, and attitude. One similar routine was about the band Judas Priest during which Hicks says, I don't think we lost a cancer cure. <laughs> um, so yeah, that I think that's kind of half and half with, uh, with the next basic career. And stealing. the sanction against Dennis Leary has worked so well that he now does voiceovers for Ford F-150 trucks. Yeah, but what happened to Bill Hicks? Uh, yeah. See what happens? No cure for happens. cancer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we'll see. Um, so what happens when you're good? Mitch Hedberg? What happens? Yeah, for some reason being good. Rodney Dangerfield? Dead. I'm going to live forever there. That's great. <laughs> Richard Pryor? Dead. See? See what happens? Chris Farley? That's right. Dead. Oh, George Carlin? Oh. I, I don't know why. I was more distraught when I found out Chris Farley died than when Michael Jackson died. Like, because it was like on MTV News, I heard about Chris Farley, and I was like, this is a joke. They're kidding. I can't lose Beverly Hills Ninja. <laughs> I felt a little bad, actually, when I... When I heard Michael Jackson died, literally, someone said, "Hey," like they were they were it was on the radio, and they looked over, like, "Hey, I think I think Michael Jackson's dead," and I, I didn't even think about it. I turned around, my first reaction was, "I really hope that's true because that's comedy gold." <laughs> that wasn't and like was. trying. I wasn't trying to be like funny and mean. Like that's something I might say to try and be mean, but that was literally the actual thought that went through my head was. There are a lot of jokes there, and the was funny. Like, oh, now I feel a little bad. The funny thing that happened is that, I don't know how we got on that, but uh. I was actually at, yeah I was actually at the Funny Bone when when he when he died and uh, Jesse Thomas was the MC that night 
And keep in mind, if y'all don't know this, uh, Buzz, I don't know if he still does it, when Jesse Thomas goes on stage, he plays Beat It. And just lets Jesse kind of stand up there and go and get into a pop about it. So we had just found out about 10 minutes before showtime that Michael Jackson died, or maybe 20 minutes or something. And then I'm wondering, what if he's going to, yeah, and then ba 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 and Jesse just stood there going, no, that's not, that's no, that's no, don't do that, no, that's not good. <laughs> It's kind of funny, like that, like there are like uh, since he died, you know, like a year ago. Like, where were you when? It's one of those moments. It's just like I don't know. See, like I, I love Michael Jackson, musician. Yeah, he's he's very, you know, he's very talented. But it's just like it is one of those moments. Where I don't know if you want to revere it as much. It's like, oh, where were you when you heard about that? You know, this, the, the the towers yeah. got hit. You know, and, I'll be honest. I forgot where I was when Michael Jackson died. Not being mean, but alive. alive. Well, one, one of the main things that I said when I heard about it, I was like, not to be mean, but I felt like we lost Michael long ago. <laughs> yeah. he, he was gone way before his body left us. He was us. putting this big show together, and you know, he didn't come back, I think, redeem himself. There you go. There we go. Yeah. Tell him about it, Dave. Yeah. Talk about it, man. Michael Jackson Get it in. was coming, he was going to make his huge Pest comeback. Fight. That's right. Yeah. Well, that was our, our one-year Michael Jackson impromptu <laughs> anniversary event. Um, so the, the last topic I have written down, unless we start, uh, unless we come up with a couple others we want to throw in, are, uh, is joke hacking. Uh, which kind of... Joke hacking? Hacking. You hack. Do I break into a joke with a computer? No, no. <laughs> Being a hack. Um, which kind of dovetails with stealing. I think that... Uh, as we talked about, uh, you know, sounding like Stephen Wright or Mitch Hedberg or Dennis Leary being Bill Hicks or, honestly, the dozens of other comedians who are just Bill Hicks, um, where, you know, Dennis Leary stole, or at least is accused of stealing, and seems to have stole material, so he actually did the joke stealing. But just being the, you know what, I'm going to go on stage and I'm going to tell my jokes, but I'm going to be loud and angry, I'm going to pretend I'm Bill Hicks or Sam Kinison. Uh, that's not really stealing. It's just kind of stupid. You know, you should be be what you are. So, yeah. joke hacking again with the low hanging fruit. You know what? If you think of something funny and then you hear ten other people say it, don't be disappointed that oh man, I thought I was gonna. <laughs> you know what? If ten other people thought of that on their own, you probably didn't want to tell it on stage anyway because that's not very original. As as was told to me, and I was thinking about this on the way over. I think there. I know of only one acceptable time it's okay to tell somebody else's jokes, and I think there are actually two. Um, I think the the first. This is the time I've been told by a uh, a comedy club GM that it was okay to do it. Is that if you're stretching for time, if you have to, you know, if you were booked to do a ten minute set, something happens now, you have to keep going and you have no more material, it is perfectly acceptable to do somebody else's jokes. Now, you may not want to do a famous person's jokes, but I've been told that that's the only time that's perfectly acceptable. You know, if you're filling, if you're at that point just filling time. Just trying to keep the crowd going. Yeah, if you have to, like, because I was telling them earlier a situation that happened to me that I was uh, emceeing a show and then the feature hadn't shown up yet. And they were trying to get in from the condo of the club and I just had to keep going and it was told me of the manager he's like at that time it's all right to do somebody else's material but i think uh, i was thinking about the only other time that it may be acceptable is uh, i do a lot of uh like because as chris mentioned earlier i'm an auctioneer and i do a lot of charity auctions and um MC a lot of events that don't call for comedy um and I think at that point, if you're doing something like that, like a straight MC gig, or you know, where you're just the master of ceremonies, you're not a comic at that point, or if it's something like a charity auction, if you think of something and it's somebody else's, I don't think it's going to hurt your reputation as a comic to just throw that out there. Right. Um, you know, how you present if, it. If you're not on a comedy stage, it's yeah. Not different. Yeah. If you're not, on, and it's not, you know, this isn't, you know, you're not being judged as a from a comedian's perspective. I don't think I don't think it's okay to do the whole act, but if you think of something, yeah, you know, then it's, yeah, why not? I tell other people's jokes all the time to people. Are, uh, today I did a couple of like 
local fellow comedians, like friends jokes while I was helping friends move. I don't even remember what I said, but there were a couple of times where something came up that was something out of one of their acts, and I worked one of their jokes in the conversation. Did you do one of my jokes? No, that's I stole funny jokes. That's a conversation. Oh. <laughs> that's a conversation. Right. Well, that's, uh, you know, that's not... It's a, it's the professional capacity. Oh, can we, I think we all do that. Can we talk about bidding? Can we please talk about bidding? We can talk about bidding. That's a good etiquette one, actually. Yeah. I'll let you take well, I won't, we, we haven't got past hacking yet. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll do hacking. Um, so, yeah. Well, one okay. thing about it is that, you know, kind of back on uh, Andrew's kind of concern of being like Mitch Hedberg, one thing that I've, I've noticed is that a lot of comedians early on, when they're kind of, they're still kind of nervous on stage, they find it easier to assume a comedian they do know. And that it's, it's almost like it's a filter that they're hiding behind that let, gives them a chance to get comfortable on stage. Even Eddie Murphy talked about it. He said when he first started, he was he was Richard Pryor on stage. He acted yeah. just like Richard Pryor. I mean, you said, you said it now, I mean, listening to their, their, their comedy albums, you know, and that's all you know. And your first time, you don't really know a lot about it. Like Paul Poundstone didn't know you were supposed to write out the jokes beforehand. So it was all just improv. And so, I mean, I think when you're first starting out, you don't know that there are sort of rules yeah, and stuff. Yeah, exactly. And then as you go along, you know, you find out more and more, and then you also develop a style and all that. That's because they didn't listen to our podcast. Exactly. <laughs> that Dave little. Chappelle, that's what he used to think. He said it, he thought it was just getting up and telling people what happened in, in school today. That well, was, it's easy for him to say. He started when he was like 13. Yeah, but he thought that's what it was. He just got up and said what happened, you know, and just talked about his day. He could do it, though, man. That's... That's uh, when I tell people my favorite comedian. I, I used to say Dave Chappelle because more so than a joke teller, he's just a funny person. He just he makes anything laughable. Um, yeah, I definitely, uh, I've definitely felt at various times that I was being other people on stage. Uh, for the first six months, I was telling jokes. Every single one of my jokes, whether I, whether I was telling it that way, I could hear another comedian telling my joke in my head. Still, I can frequently, I, I wrote a joke today that I I really like and I'm gonna keep, but I cannot hear it without hearing Chris Martin telling it. <laughs> like it's just, it, it, it sounds like him in my head. And I'm like, so, BP is in the news. <laughs> no, it's, uh, I'll, I'll tell it in, in Chris Martin's style that's stuck in my head actually. It's, uh, um, just as long as you don't fuck Gwyneth Paltrow, that's all, all right. So I only have one friend on MySpace. Or, shit, I fucked up. I'm on, I'm on my... So I only have one friend on Facebook. It's Tom from MySpace. <laughs> I'm going to figure out a different way to tell it, but I just, like, I, I hear I hear that Chris Martin's voice in my head, and I don't want to. I want to hear it in my voice. Well, that happened to me at Kazi's the other night when I was on stage. I was like, all of a sudden, I feel like Odyssey. Yeah. <laughs> and that yeah. wasn't a dig at him in any means. It just, it, for some reason, just the way the words came out of my mouth and the way I was standing... So, and I was just like, why do I feel like Odyssey all of a sudden? It's like smiling and pausing between camp? things. But yeah, it's very weird. Sometimes in my head I hear my jokes uh, as though they're being told by Ray. And then sometimes on stage I hear my jokes told by Ray. But, but I have fun doing those. Just kind of like, it, it, when I'm like off you know, doing whatever, thinking about the other comics and like how exactly they do tell their jokes because everyone does have their distinct style and, it, and it's just kind of fun to think about because uh, I, I I love like mocking my friends and and as you comics become my friends I almost want to mock you <laughs> even though I'm just as easy to mock <laughs> if not easier um, it's like oh I'm Patrick I'm not funny I guess to to go back to the original thing though hacking is is being unoriginal like that's that's the basic whether it's something someone's done before and you've seen it and gone, oh, I want to do that too. Uh, or it's something you don't realize everyone's done before, but everyone's done before. It's, it's like little kids always think they're the first people who thought of everything. Yeah. <laughs> and it's silly. Like you, you know, think about it. a little kid who's like, oh, I'm the first one to ever figure out how to, you know, pull my pants up or whatever. And they're so I'm excited. I'm going to get a key necktie, right? Yeah. What, okay. <laughs> and they're so excited, but you're like, whatever. That's cute. You think you're, you think you're original. It's the same thing when you're an adult and someone professionally is like, "Oh, I'm the first person who ever thought, you know, airline farting food. on stage and talking about how airline food is." Airline gorgeous. food. What's the deal? What's with airline the deal? Um, I think it's okay for a first timer. Right. You, you, you kind of give them a pass, um, and it's just like you chalk it up the first time nerves or just 
Yeah. Like David said, you don't, you know, there's just the fact that you don't know the rules. Yeah, you grow. Yeah. And once in a while, you know, you'll, you'll do a five minute set and you'll have one joke that was kind of like, uh, but that's the biggest indicator is usually you can tell. If it's something everyone's heard some variety of before, it's not going to get the reaction you want. If the whole crowd is dying, you probably weren't hacking. Whether, whether you think you might have been or not. But yeah, when everyone's like, oh, yeah, <laughs> women can't drive. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's like, all right, good for you. Now you can make it specific. You can figure out, all right, how do I take this tired, sad hat material? How do I make it about me? You know, how do I take, you know, women can't drive? And how do I turn it into my wife can't drive in a way that's specific and not something everyone's done before? I think one I don't of the, know, it's hard. I think one of the quickest ways to get original is just to rely on some funny experiences of yours, like a story that happened to you that you go, I know no one else had this happen to them. Right. I think that's just one of the quickest and easiest ways to go, okay, how I tell it to my friends, I, I tell it as me, and me isn't anybody else. And so it's a quick way to get original, a quick way to get some good laughs, and be confident that you're not going to hear somebody else telling you a week later. Yeah, using your stories, using your life, helps a lot. Uh, it's it makes it a lot easier to be original. Yeah, they're your stories. Because yeah. <laughs> it's not cheating if it's your dog. See? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's not hacking. All right. Uh, so our next topic that Dave brought up is uh, is bidding, particularly with professional etiquette, and I'm going to let Dave run with it. If you don't know what bidding is, I don't. God knows, I hate this morning. Okay. Bidding is when you come up to another person and you start talking, uh, only to, to come to find out you're, you're actually trying out material on them. You're telling them a joke to, to gauge their reaction. Yeah. And nothing can be more fucking annoying than to have a comedian do that to, actually to anybody, but especially to another comedian, because comedians know when they're being bid, bidded. Um, and Jesus, it sucks. And it's so, I mean, no, it's not, it's okay to be like, hey, I got a thing. Um, I want, I, you know, can, can I run it by you to see if it's funny? Sure, go ahead. That's not bidding. Bidding is, dude, oh my God, it was so weird. On the way over here, uh, yeah, I hit this dog, and then the dog was like, oh my, you know, that thing. Like doing a joke <laughs> yeah. as if. It just. <laughs> oh, and, and it happened to me outside the Funny Bone at a Clash of the Comics, and this guy. It was raining, and the guy comes up, and he's like, "Man, I remember when I was growing up. It was so it was, I, we were so poor, we couldn't even afford rain." And I'm like, "Okay, um, yeah, no bidding. This is not. We're not doing that." And he's like, "What do you mean?" I was like, "You can't just straight up tell me a joke." He's like, "That's not a joke. That actually happened. Really? You actually you were actually too rain. poor to afford rain." <laughs> <laughs> and. I don't think anything is more annoying than, and like I said, it's no problem if you have a joke and you want to say, hey, I want to run this by you, see, that's totally cool. But to come up with it and to, to bring it into casual conversation, I don't think anything pisses off comics more than that. I think on the flip side, though, when, I mean, comics are funny people, when we're, we're most times, when we're, when we're talking to somebody and, and maybe we're telling them something that just happened or, or something like that, and the first response goes, Oh, that's funny. Use that. Use that in your set. You should. It's like, really, you don't think I can evaluate what I should use in my set? Well, I actually, have, that actually happened to me twice uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and it's funny. Uh, I, if you heard me do a thing about the World Cup, um, and I said it to, uh, we were watching the stupid World Cup, and I was like, you know, they can make fun of us all we want to. When this is over, we'll just go back to being America. And the guy was like, damn, that's funny. He's like, you got to do that. I was like, uh, and I had to explain. I was like, dude, I'm not bidding you. I was like, that wasn't a bit, that wasn't anything. Yeah. And it actually, something similar happened, uh, oddly enough, the night before with the same guy. Where I was like, I was talking to my wife, and I was like, yeah, well, we're just going to go home. And he's like, oh, I thought we were going out. And I was like, and I hung up, and I was like, that's what I tell her. <laughs> I was like, you learn, because he just got married. I was like, you learn, being married, you become a minister of information. It's like you're like the dude on Good Morning Vietnam when the news comes across, you scratch out and just stick to the relevant point. He's like, he's like, that's totally something you ought to work. I was like, okay, and I had to explain. I was like, I'm seriously not trying to bitch you here. 
I was like, it's just, it just pop, you know. But yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's like yeah, we're funny people, and that comes across. But it's like when you're trying out material. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. That yeah, part, you, but you sometimes it's not that happens. It's just not. Yeah. It's so far from etiquette. It's just. I mean, you're just pretty much wasting because you're at that point. You're not engaging in conversation. Right. You're just using them as guinea pigs, and that's just so fucking annoying. Well, it's like yeah. you, you can sometimes realize when you do it when you realize that you're looking through the person and not at them. <laughs> you're like imagining they're a crowd. Yeah, if you're having a conversation and you think of something funny, you say it. Everyone does that, especially comedians, and that's fine. And maybe it was really funny, and you pull out your notebook and write it down and tell it on stage later. But you know when it's something you thought of because it's part of the conversation you're currently having, and when you scripted it and are just sitting there waiting for a chance to use it. Uh, what was it you said about steering the conversation last week? Did I? Oh, uh, I don't we were talking, yeah. it was, uh, you know, it's one thing when you're having a conversation about something and you think something funny and say it, and it's another one that's like, oh, you know, man, it's hot out. Yeah. It Speaking of, yeah, I had a hot right. girlfriend once. <laughs> what? <laughs> Shut up. Elite. Nice word association. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. It's so it's so far from etiquette from being polite and polite and polite conversation that it's just it's so poor form. Yeah. A lot of times I just preface it with, oh, well, actually, a bit that I was working on. Yeah. I mean, if you do that, I think that's totally acceptable. You know, so there's this thing. I'm, yes. It's funny you say that. There's this thing I'm working on now. Exactly. But as long as you have to preface that with, hey, what I'm about to tell you is material. Yeah. And, you know, I think that happened to us. Uh, me and uh, Curran were at a show uh, somewhere downtown. And this guy who does, uh, I think he's done comedy in the state. So I feel like I've been scolded now. Silly like this. Uh, but a, a guy who, uh, who, who rarely uh, does comedy came up, said something. And it was so apparent that we were being bitted that I just kind of looked at him and I was like, okay, just, we want you to go away now. Just because he was being such a jackass. That's all he was doing. He wasn't talking to us, he was bidding us. And that's just, that's just fucking rude. So. You know what I think the rule should be? I think if they bit you without asking first, you should then get to steal it because they didn't tell you it was a joke. <laughs> that's right. That's funny. Uh, that's, yeah, I'm going to use that upstairs later. Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot. Man. Exactly. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. I'm writing that down right now. That's but, uh, whoa, whoa. That, that's one of my jokes. Uh -oh. And why did why did you just tell it to me? Were you, were you bidding? Did you me? see the beginning of uh, Seinfeld's? Um, I'm saying I'm telling you for the last time. Yeah. In the beginning, they're in a cemetery. And it's all these famous comedians in a cemetery, and they're burying Jerry Seinfeld's material. They got all his like little piece of paper in a casket. And uh, it's um, what's the guy's name? Miller? Is it Larry Miller? Larry Miller? No, Larry Miller. Long guy. Yeah, Larry yeah. Miller and oh, Paul yeah. Reiser are having a conversation, and he goes, um, "Why is it always the best uh, kept lawns in cemeteries? I mean, it's not like they know they're dead." And Paul Reiser's like, "You gonna, you gonna that's funny. You gonna use that?" He goes, "Not. I'm just saying." <laughs> That's not a bit. I'm just saying it's good. I'm gonna take that. And Larry Miller goes, "You can't take that. That's my bit." <laughs> <laughs> but you just said, "No, that's my bit. You can't have that. I'm taking it." So yeah, but that's what we ought to do. Next time somebody bit you, take that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it's not funny, threaten to take it. <laughs> Tell them flat well, out. Isn't the that's joke funny. That, I'm 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 gonna use that. Isn't the joke that grass always green cemeteries because the bodies become fertilizer? I don't think that's the Will joke. Is that now? No, no. I thought I've heard that joke before. Um, dude, you're not going to hear me on stage. I'm like, well, talk about cemeteries. I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah. I don't do think it's that Do you think I'm stupid? Do you think I'm dumb? Do you think I'm stupid? Do I don't have any sense? Do you think I'm what? stupid? Do I look yeah, dumb? Yeah, yeah. No, I just took the band-aids off. No, see, I wasn't bidding you guys when I said I got clipped by a lawnmower guy all the way over here. Do we look dumb? <laughs> what are we, idiots? Those, Those people went on, dude. Copyrighted 2010, DMG. Oh, Speaking of jokes, Stanley, didn't you uh, <laughs> didn't you do a Ron White set last week? I didn't they steal. They called me <laughs> Tater Sal. I was told to do it. Yes, that is the that is the other exception to joke stealing. When Jared spins the wheel and says you have to do a famous person set for five minutes. And Silver, that is why I didn't get you to film that. Yeah, totally fine. <laughs> because I'm not gonna have. 
somehow that finds its way to the internet. Yeah. And somebody's like, he's doing. How does he think that's his? Uh, oh my God! When they don't know the context, which yeah. was it was a roulette wheel, and I was told to perform a famous person's act. You yeah. Had to pick the person though. Yeah. That was the only one I could do. And let me tell you, nothing goes over in uh, in uh, strange manner better than blue collar. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> On the flip side though. Probably just saying the kids love blue collar. <laughs> yeah. Man, I'm jealous. I would have done Dave Chappelle. <laughs> well, like, uh, you know, it wouldn't be that. But Zia could have seen it stolen a bit. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what a triple stole. would have been rough. So that was, yeah, I was forced to do it. I didn't want to do it. I wanted to do my stuff, but I played along. What was some of the, I, I, I'm sorry, I, I missed it. What were some of the other roulette things that people had to do? Gay Southern accent. Yeah. Wish I landed on that. That was a good one. Uh, somebody else's material, uh, somebody else's um, set. Do impressions. Do impressions. Uh, Catchphrases. German, Catchphrases. Catchphrases. Oh, don't worry. That was funny. Down. I don't know how you kept thinking of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I just pulled up my ass. I was like, whatever. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I couldn't think of that many. I was like, I would have just done the same one and just yeah. kept doing it over and over. But you actually were thinking of different. I was like, holy crap! And he's actually coming up with them. You got to do the Jimmy one. Oh. That's not I wanted you to land on impressions. See, yeah, exactly. Yes, I wanted yeah, to do that because I wanted to see your impressions. I was like, I was like, damn it. it. Well, my problem with the wheel too was that there was like, do your own set like three times on it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, so so, so Jared's gonna listen to this or something, and then you're know, like, dude, yeah. just put that on there once. Yeah. You know. Like, put something he else. He knows. He said he's going to fix that. He's got stickers to replace oh, it. But I love that, though. German accent was the one that never came up. I would have liked to have seen that. That would have been good. That was one. I wanted the German accent oh, because I really wanted going. to tell the Jewish jokes in a German accent. <laughs> Someone pointed out to oh, me that. Dude, Chris Barr, it, it turns out the, you know, the ovens and Auschwitz with just tanning beds. She'll yeah. never call us your mother anymore. Facebook is Jewish. Facebook, call your mother. Why aren't you a lawyer? So I logged on to JD because I wanted to know where all the Jewish things are. Jews. Is it like gay German accent? Hunter. No, he just makes no. it that no. way. That's just me. I have to get back to, to visit into Wasquat Vogue. Uh, what's all what was the, the SNL? Hans and Franz. That's my... <laughs> right, no, no, the no, old tour. Pop, Dieter. Dieter. You no, like yeah. Sprockets with yeah. Mike Myers. Right. Dieter. 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 I got two Sprockets. I had a German friend I knew who would talk like that. I lived in Germany. <laughs> SNL is my only source for There's German a bike accent. store in Broad called Sprockets, and I always oh, crack up when I go by. Sprockets, just for that. It's water. So did Boy, anyone we have, track, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> did anyone have uh, any more etiquette topics or questions? Chris Martin. If you tell if you tell a joke that someone else wrote for you, should you give them credit? No. 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 Not doing the set. That just that's a, yeah. breaks uh -huh. the flow of it. Unless it wasn't funny. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. No, it's, it's at that point. It's it's yours. Yeah, they yeah. too. Yeah. That's usually business anyway. I mean, like right. Well, yeah, Alan wrote a bunch of wrote a bunch of jokes for really like, comedians back in the day. It's yeah, like, we were thanked him. Yeah. He was like, he got paid. For it. You can't. Yeah, that's something too. You know, that's. Uh, it's like David said. It disrupts the flow. You can't go. You know. Right. Say your joke. Ha ha. By the way, that was uh, David Marie Garland. Okay, moving yeah. on. By the way, that was Leo Marina. Yeah. You know it's that. Weird. It, What's funny is that, like, I mean, because it's like a business transaction, like, you kind of have to, like, you're, you have to understand if you're going to be doing that, like, writing a joke for somebody else, and even, like, a, just a little flip it kind of thing, it's like, you probably won't get credit for it. It's the whole point of it, you know? Like, yeah. I wrote this for somebody, for them, it may sound better coming out of their mouth if they specifically request you to do it, you know? So it's like, that's it. They paid you money, or just, you know, handshake, whatever, so it's like, don't use it, and don't tell people you wrote stuff for them, you know? We do, yeah, we do the writing sessions at the Funny Bone, and we're, you know, I think it's great that people get together because, uh, it, you know, other people listen to, to what you got, and at that point, it provides a you know somebody may have a, a perspective on that joke that you never had coming into it, so they'll give you a, a tag or something, and it's like holy shit, I never even thought of that, and so you you know that at that point it's fair game because we're just yelling stuff out. So um, I'm trying to think of something that I did that uh, the circ I never used this tag. Uh, I'm trying. I can't think of right now something that I'm, I'm using right now that somebody else gave me. That's not to say I just can't think of it right now. But uh, oh shit, I'm actually trying to think of something better that I use. Um, well, while he's thinking, John Reeves wrote the funny half of my unicorn jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had the one joke and I liked it, and he came up and gave me and was like, "Oh, you should think about this." And I, I I used both. I made it into a, a joke with two, like a story that has two punchlines and. Second half is my favorite, and I don't, uh, you know, I don't send my like, hey, John Reeves wrote that joke, but I, the way I wrote 
the tag he gave me is that... So I told that joke I just told the first half to a friend of mine, uh, and he said this, and that's the... But yeah, that's, like the cool that's, my, that's the like cool thing is people will come up with tags for you. And it's totally cool if you do it, you know. But yeah, I mean, I, I wrote a joke for um, for a comedian one time, and yeah, I got paid for it. It was pretty cool. So it was Victoria Jackson. Well, we didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> well, Name I, dropping. Name dropping under etiquette. <laughs> That's I'm a good not, one to talk about, actually. I'm not sure it's rude, but it's annoying. It's annoying. It's yeah. so it's it's not annoying, but sometimes you have to like. It, sometimes when you leave it out, it's a certain comedian. I has but been I didn't say yeah. Years. Yeah. You know, I didn't say you know, and it's yeah. so hard to leave something out. It's like so. I was talking to this uh, comedian. Who is it? Uh, such and such. Okay, name dropper. Fucking name. You asked yeah. me who it was. <laughs> yeah. But it's just, or I mean, it. it it's sometimes, a little lose situation. Some yeah, because sometimes. Telling their name, kind of, or telling you who it is, kind of, it makes the story. Otherwise, it wouldn't, you know. Right. But it is. It's kind of. It, you kind of know when people are doing it, when people aren't. And somebody did it last uh, last DM. Somebody did it. I'm not gonna say who, but somebody totally <laughs> like dropped the name, and it was like, "Are you serious? You just well, such and such told me I should." I'm like, "Really? You didn't have to say that person's name. That totally said nothing, other than you just totally put yourself on the pedestal." Yeah. Which you, I've seen. I wish I could name drop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel the couple of names I can drop. I usually, if I feel like doing it, because I, there are there are a couple of people who I have talked to or actually know. Who I'll be like, oh, you know what? I, I'm proud of the fact that I know them. They're almost famous. Uh, I'll at least try and be conversational about it. Be like, oh yeah, I know this guy because I mean, you don't just act like they're your, your best friend in the world. Like so, I was talking to Jerry Seinfeld the other day, and uh, I said, Jerry. <laughs> you know, I, or you can be like, you know, this one time I actually I met Jerry Seinfeld, and he told you know that's a lot different. That's actually the story the way it happened, not your buddy. What are all of Jerry's jokes? Okay, that's right. <laughs> Is it ever bad form to offer criticism or feedback if you're not if it's not solicited? I would um, say. Uh, go ahead. I was gonna say, well. This was like after a bad set, and some guy came up to me and told me how I could do a joke better, and that was not appropriate. <laughs> not that he knew that I had a bad set, but he probably didn't know that I had a bad set. I think it's a case by case situation. Yeah. yeah. Um, somebody asked me, uh, this person is a fellow MC, and he asked, he had a suggestion for a certain headliner uh, that he was pretty tight with. Should he, he? He asked me. He's like, I think this joke that they're doing is horrible, and I want to tell them that hey, they're better than that. Should I tell them? I took it from the perspective of what I do, and I was like, I wouldn't do it. It's not in my place, and I was thinking purely in position. Uh, but when he he did approach the headliner and told him that the headliner was pretty thankful. So you know, I, I was wrong about that, and just I took it from a, a standpoint of, of the position. You know, should an MC tell a headliner, hey, that joke you do? But they were, you know, better friends than that. So that was, you know, totally exciting. I think that was a case where it was acceptable. Yeah. Well, I always like receiving uh, constructive criticism. But I think overall the good general rule of thumb is is keep it short and keep it somewhat uh, general with few specifics. Like, really getting into the material itself isn't always good, but it's like, hey, I notice you, you, you blink a lot on stage, or something, something yeah. stupid like that, where it's like, if you just make that slight improvement, you'll have a better stage. Like at that point, you're just like, nitpicking if you're just getting a laundry list of stuff. Yeah. Well, I but think I mean, with David, like with David, just like what, what David said, it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing about timing. If you come off and you're just feeling beat up, you know what? That sucked. Really, thanks. Yeah. Here's a way you can do it better, really. Yeah. Yourself. And don't give me a cheesy or a punchline. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you've got a tag or something, you know, on somebody, yeah, that's a, you know, it's perfect to go up to somebody. Hey, you know, that joke you did was funny. Uh, I had a tag for it, and you know, if you want to try it out, and I think that's totally fair game, you know, because tags and, and things like that are totally like, you know, it's a freebie. You know, somebody, you know, a lot of times people come to me and go, hey, that, that joke you do, try this out. Yeah, it's no harm to try it. Well, I think I personally think open is about criticism. Yeah, true. No matter how famous or good somebody can be, it's like you can always be better. It's just kind of like just, it's, it's really a matter of how you present it. You know, like everybody's saying, it's just like don't don't be a dick about it. Just you know, be constructive and just keep it short. You know, and like even if the guys like you know Seinfeld or something like that, it's like, nah, unless they're completely egotistic. Right? I worked yeah, with uh, Seinfeld or Chris Rock. Yeah. No, it's fine. I worked with uh, uh, 
son of this lady comedian at Kazi who said that she actually opened for Chris Rock like years ago and her son was like seven at the time. She said he was hanging out in the green room because there was really no other place to put him. So he was, well, he was sitting in the, I think they had to put him in the manager's office or the green room because he was so young. And he couldn't watch the show, but he watched it on closed circuit TV. Chris Rock comes in after the show and he goes, I hear some tags I think might help you. And like gave him like three or four, the six year old gave him Chris Rock <laughs> like three or four tags and he actually looked at me and was like, Yeah, that was pretty funny, actually. <laughs> and so the comedian, the lady comedian was telling me she was like, I was so horrified, I was just like, Oh my god, no you didn't, no you didn't. But it actually ended up something was actually kind of a funny story. That's awesome. It was name dropping by proxy I think. <laughs> No, yeah, good stuff. Uh, and tag is the magic word. Like that's the difference between, especially if it's someone you don't know, like someone who's featuring or headlining somewhere. You know, you go up. That's the difference between, hey man, I got a funny joke for you. And you know, you go up, hey, uh, I got a tag for you if you want it. All of a sudden they're like, oh, you're a comedian. You're Should we define for the for the listeners? No, it's a, it's a, it's a if they don't know, I don't want them to know. Because I don't want someone to be like, hey man. I got a tag for you. Oh, started so my wife can't drive. We should use that. <laughs> a tag is just something you tag on to the end of a joke yeah. that would give it an extra laugh. Honestly, it, it means the same thing as punchline. Almost. Also, sometimes it's called emotional tag. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Carter. Well, at least the play. Well, say it, Chris. Oh, yeah, sorry. Carter. Sorry. Book. Mm-hmm. It's just called emotional tag. Okay. But that's it. The emotional tag. I don't know. Yeah. That's a plug for Judy Carter. That's stand-up comedy of the book, as opposed to comedy Bible. I think comedy Bible is one of those things. And stand-up comedy of the book, one of those things that if you're getting stand-up, I don't think anything's more helpful. You know what I'd like to read? I'm not to suck as an MC. To... Does anyone have a copy I could borrow? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a callback! That's <laughs> a callback! Uh, What's a callback, movie, David? The, What's a callback? The callback? I don't know how to define a callback. I don't know. The, I get too wordy about that. I don't. Yeah. Know, I don't know how to define it. You know what it is. It's one of those things. You know what it is. You just don't know how to define it. It's using a tag for a joke you didn't just tell. Speaking of which, Jesse Thomas, I want my copy of Comedian DVD back, please. <laughs> it's been over a year, Jesse. Bring it back, Jesse. Well, I'm gonna have to loan any comedians anything. Just oh, yeah. Don't worry right now. No doubt. <laughs> yeah. How do you define the rules or the etiquette for comedy condos, David C. Winfield? Um, whatever the club tells you. Yeah, they had something about that in my comment as well. Yeah. It's whatever um, Jesse Thomas now, he heard. <laughs> I'm like, speak of the, speak of the devil. Hey, real quick, I'm on the thing with Chris Martin. Are you there? The thing? I'm on the I'm on the podcast. I'm on the podcast. We're doing the podcast right now. No, I was just saying, we just started talking about you. You need to bring my copy. Of, uh, somebody asked me about the copy of Comedian on DVD. I asked. Leo asked. Is it what it did? Yeah, you don't know who has it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know? Okay. Well, we got to go now. We're talking about important stuff. Anything you'd like me to add? We're talking about comedy condos right now. Like etiquette in the condo. This is kind of taking a phone call during my set. <laughs> this is called phoning it in. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was the one that was. Breaking the rules on there that. There you go. All right. So Jesse Thomas is. Uh, all right. Well, we'll talk about that. All right. I'll talk to you later. Sorry about that, everyone. That was Jesse Thomas. Oh, Jesse Thomas. Live local. teleconference. Jesse Thomas. Did you call me, ladies and gentlemen? What a jackass. No. Uh, <laughs> no, he was. Uh, we, I asked him. Uh, he's staying in a condo as we speak, and uh, his uh, his rule of etiquette. Uh, always take out the trash. Always put the trash where it goes. Uh, if you have laundry, make sure you know. Make sure you leave the things as you found it. Because uh, this isn't just a hotel room where uh, you know you have housekeeping come by. No, this is uh, you know they have rules posted. Follow those rules and um, just try to be as respectful as you would have uh, you know if you were staying somewhere where you want to be respectful. And a friend's house or something. Yeah. I think. But not like a comedian friend. Yeah, not a comedy friend. A real friend. Tragedy friend. Yeah, tragedy yeah. friend. <laughs> I think, uh, I think, going back for a second, um, on giving people feedback, uh, I think the linchpin there is the unsolicited part. 
I think that, you know, with your friends, you know, most of us will get off stage and we'll totally go over and be like, hey, you should do this differently, or you use this too often, or I noticed you, you got too quiet, you know, then that's, but it's generally solicited amongst your friends. It's just, it's unspoken that, hey, give me some feedback when I get off my open mic stage. For a stranger, where you don't know them, uh, I won't usually give them unsolicited feedback, but I might try and solicit feedback. I might go over and actually start having a conversation with them. Most comedians, if they've been doing it for any length of time, they'll ask. They'll say, hey, what'd you think of what I said, or were you watching me? They'll ask for your feedback right off the bat. Or it might come up more casually, and it's like, you know, like yeah, I don't know how I felt about that set. You know, <laughs> I said, hey, well, what? <laughs> do you want Do you want some notes? And they'll tell you, you know, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely, tell me what you got. Or, and, you know, I just, I just kind of want to go drink this set away and, and let it go. So I think the unsolicited part is, is the sticking point. Yeah, I had a question on the flip side of that. Like, especially if you're, if you're new, right? Yeah. Like, um, like, what's the protocol for, like, you know, being new and being like, hey, I don't know how the fuck I did up there. Like, you know, <laughs> do you, you know can, you, can you help me out? Or, like, just, just like that. Yeah. yeah. No, one, even, no one will ever mind you asking. Yeah. The worst case scenario is they'll be like, uh, I don't know. I yeah. think the best thing to do in that situation, uh, ask people to watch beforehand. Okay. Because a lot of times it's it's kind of embarrassing if somebody came up to me and go, hey, what did you think? Well, I was outside. I wasn't yeah. I wasn't, and you, you don't, I was on the phone. you know, and something like that. So uh -huh. what I like for people to do, if they come up to me and go, hey, I'm working on something new, can you watch? <laughs> you know, and just let me know what you thought. I think that's the best way to go about that. Speaking of getting off and on the stage and putting things back where they were. Right. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> dot, dot, dot. Yes. <laughs> were we? Does anybody have any tips on that? Yeah, oh. I was, I was at an open mic Friday. They didn't have a mic stand. They just, they, they just kept the yeah. mic on the stool in between people. And I was, I, was, I don't know. I just felt we like I never used the mic stand, but it just felt weird not having it. Between Diem and 955's broken mic stands, we've come close a couple of times. Um, yeah, I always try to put the mic. I think it's important to, to leave the stage as you found it. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think it's important, and I think it was, uh, I forget who it was, but, uh, a, you know, the rule always when you go up on stage, when you take the mic out of the stand, you put the stand behind you. So consequently, when you're done with your set, bring the stand and put it back on front of the stage, you know, front and center, and put the mic stand in it. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of people who don't give a shit about that, headliners especially. Uh, they'll just do whatever the hell, and that's fine. They're headliners, they can do that, so. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, I think the, the proper thing is to leave things as you found it. If you knock something over, pick the shit back up when you're done. Someone uh, was talking to me the other day about uh, something I never really even thought about before. It would, it would never bother me. But uh, putting the mic back in uh, in the mic stand right. as opposed to handing it off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you never hand. I mean, I've, I mean, I've seen people hand it yeah. off and they have trouble with it. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Yep. Do I stick your hand Yeah, what, what yes, are we doing? That, you know, that's cool. And because a lot of times, uh, you know, the way it's rigged, the, the mic doesn't fit back in the stand so easy or something like that. Yeah. But it's a, just you like to put it back. About turning the mic off. Well, a lot of them don't have on-off switches. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't turn the mic off. And I think it, that happens by accident a lot of times. Yeah. Um, it's also nitpicking at that point. It's also okay. funny when you see somebody who doesn't know how to like actually function around a mic and a mic stand. It's like a, I, I've seen one guy once where seriously for like almost a minute straight he was trying to pull it. Through the, the 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 mic ring the opposite direction, like he grabbed it from behind where the core was, it was like pulling it down. Like, dude, you do realize you're tightening it. <laughs> he yeah. just kept on. <laughs> and I'm yeah, that's uh, that's one. I think that's one of those byproducts that a lot of people don't even realize. Um, Funny Bone Richmond has the, the the trigger stand. Yeah. That all you have to do is squeeze the trigger and it moves up and down any way you want to. And I've seen there was a guy who came from uh, he was a he's a writer for SNL and did not know how to use that stand. And just trying to grab it and just like, just struggling with it. And I was like, it's a trigger. You squeeze the trigger. It's just something a lot of people don't know. That, Nobody, it's, not, it's not like, you know, a, a toaster microwave mic stand. It's yeah. in everybody's See, like, <laughs> so, so, some mics are very different. So, 
and 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 they function differently. And I've seen some people like literally hit themselves in the chin with the mic. So like that's why I just pull it off the mic stand. I don't even want to bother it. I put right. it behind me and get it out the way. So at least that way, it's like it, uh, mics are always the same, except for maybe how close you gotta hold it. But exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really an etiquette thing, I guess, but it's not a bad idea to familiarize yourself if you have the time with the mic and the mic stand. Most of the open mics, you know, you're there two hours before the show is even remotely beginning, and the stage is just a little thing in the corner. You know, you can't necessarily go on at the funny one and be like, hey, I'm, I'm going to walk up on stage and just play with the mic stand for a second and familiarize, familiarize myself with it. That's not going to fly, but yeah, you can, if you don't know how to use the mic stand at, at Diem, just when Joe gets there, walk over and look at it. You're like, oh, all right, that's how that works. I just bring a full book stand on. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of, well so uh, box. We Gregory's mic stand, we don't usually bring it to uh, 955, because there's one there, but um, it goes to uh, Kenny's show at Gibson's, the Bucking Comedy Throwdown. We use that sound equipment some other shows. It's got the uh, the silicone grip that you, you put the mic down, and it just it does like that. And it's, it's my favorite mic stand ever. It works perfectly. But uh, everyone tries to, uh, and I apologize for the visuals, for those of you who can only imagine them, uh, who try to put it in like the regular plastic collar. It's so yeah. hot. Yeah. You're, you're and it doesn't work, so they do like this, and it just kind of dangles there. <laughs> like, it's not that. that hard. Spend a, spend a couple seconds and go like, oh, hey, that's how that works. I think I tried it at the last open mic. I was like, hey, everybody, if you, don't, if you haven't used it before, this is how that mic stand works. But, yeah, it's not that hard to go, oh, that's how that works. I kind of have a question. Uh, what's the responsibility of uh, the MC to uh, break the situation down for uh, comedians that are performing? What do you mean? You know, uh, like the MC telling people, you know, like how how it how how the mic stand works, or you know, there are certain things. That look over here for the light. Yeah, usually if that's not handled at a um, like a pre a pregame meeting, uh, they should do that from the stage. Yeah, I I think I had to do that. Because we didn't do a pregame meeting at the last concerts at IMC. Yeah. Um, usually they do have a pre, you know, a pre meeting, but I just didn't do it. So I, I got up there and I told. Um, oh shit! Two girls making out right now. Um, <laughs> no, Roy Rogers. And, uh, I used to have to pay for well, Justin uh, Sussman would say usually I have to pay money for that. No. No, that's not you. That's, I don't. Cheers <laughs> out. Roy Rogers. Rogers. Quiznos, yeah. Quiznos. I know, I don't want to. Um, they, uh, ha, what happened? They, uh. Roster training time. She's cute. The, um. What were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, pre game meeting. Where am I? MC duty. Pre game meeting. Um, or, yeah. Or maybe if it's something you didn't think of. Usually the, the big things are, yeah, there's how much time you're doing, uh, where there's going to be a light coming from, and all that, so. Uh, if you don't handle that in a pregame, then you do it from the stage. And a lot of times that's actually not the MC. Like some of the shows, the MC is the guy putting it on. Like so far, I've MC'd everything in Fallout, which I'll probably change once more people are coming. Off. Yeah. <laughs> Battery guy or you We're at hour 45 right now. Yeah. yeah. I guess we'll wrap up our video podcast quickly then. No, no, no. Let's just try again. Okay. Let's reduce everybody. I don't know how long. Uh, this is part two. You guys? Yeah. We don't know where we stopped, so you might have to check out the video later to find out. But it's like I got here like an hour late. Where is it? Back. back. Um. Okay. okay. We were uh, we were talking about uh, etiquette tips for Facebook and Twitter. The comedians. I think no races. Yeah, I think the same applies just to overall Facebook yeah. Twitter. Yeah. 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 I think one thing I've learned too is people are starting to inundate with shit constantly. I think you need to. I mean, there's a fine line between promoting and shoving it down people's throat. Yeah, I've gotten um, three text messages while we've been sitting here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think, you know, it's fine. What do you think about bidding by uh, Twitter and Facebook? Man. That's the new thing. That is the new thing. What do you do? I mean, that's. Because it's easy enough to ignore. I yeah, guess. I think that's all right. I think it's, I think it's kind of dumb for people. I mean, if that's what you I, want to do, yeah. there, was, there were articles about that, like how that is the new, 
comedy thing. Like that's what it's it's comedy via Twitter, and that's what people are having to do, and that's cool. And I don't know. I, I'm I'm kind of like it, it, I don't know. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it because it's not. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. But my thing is that you're basically putting like your joke on a public forum. Yeah. And it's like if somebody steals it, you really have no right to complain. Yeah. Because I mean, like you're also you're putting it up there without letting people know. Listen, this is mine. Yeah. Don't take it. I'm just trying to try this. It's like if you just do it, like you know, like whatever, and like you, you, you know, you can't help somebody stealing it. You know? Well, they can't really steal it because you you have your name attached to it and it's dated. So. But time stamping. Yeah. Yeah, but it's hard to say you've got a copyright on telling yeah. it on stage. Well, you you have something like you can copyright. Remember that thing? You can't copyright jokes. Yeah. Um, you put it up on the like, oh, You can, you can copyright why. the delivery, right? Isn't that what it was? Well, that's why Sarah Silverman, you can't steal her jokes because if you told it, it wouldn't be funny. But if Sarah yeah. Silverman tells it, it's funny. That's and that's goal. not original with me. That's coming from UVA yeah. intellectual property experts. That's honestly the goal of any comedian. You should be funny. And you write your material, and that's great. But ideally, to really be big, no one else should be able to tell your jokes the way you tell them. Like that's, that's what it is to be really talented. Is they're your jokes that you wrote and you told the way you tell them and no one can even touch you. But Zen in the art of stand-up comedy. I just, as far as like bidding online, I wouldn't want people to read my jokes without any delivery. And that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I was like, that, yeah. like, that loses a one, lot. That, that, that's a whole different form. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's, it's weird. It's hard, it's hard to be funny both as a stand-up and like, as a writer, but like they're so different in how you have to present yourself. Like, you can be a really funny comedian, but in terms of writing stuff on paper and making people laugh at what they're reading, it's completely yeah. different. I've, I've, I'll post funny status updates when I think of them, and there are very few of them are actually bits I would ever want to do on stage, they're just something funny, but uh, there aren't many things that I would want to post an update and then do on stage, and I would never post an update of something I was already planning on doing on stage, I would just do it on stage. Yeah. Honestly, all my friends on Facebook are at Cafe DM anyway. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna talk about how I had a ham sandwich for lunch, so I'm gonna bet. Go ahead. Nothing wrong with that. I only hear about it. Oh yeah, sandwich. you're fine. I don't think it's gonna be yeah, I don't. Uh, the point of this is I have no problem with other people yeah. doing it. I just I don't want to do it. But yeah, I don't feel like I'm being bitted in an unfair way because posting something on Twitter is not the same as cornering me in a conversation. Where I have to respond, I can just read it and be like, "Oh, sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's not, sometimes I don't care." The other thing I would say about Twitter is, please don't hook it into your YouTube account so that you favorited this, you did this, you did this. Every time you yeah. sneeze on on YouTube, it posts to your Twitter account because like nobody cares. It's just clogging up the Twitter. Yeah, screen. that's Twitter. You probably say that in not all yeah. social media in general. Twitter, Foursquare. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Foursquare. It's this thing where you, uh, you log I'm at on Starbucks, to Foursquare I'm and tell them where you are. I'm, at, where I'm the mayor of Lamplighter yeah. Cafe. Yeah, and it'll it'll base against everyone else who's used Foursquare from that location. And if you've done it the most, you, you're the mayor. You're winning the game until someone does it more than you. And then you have to go get your title back. A lot of businesses yeah. participate by when you update from you know from Starbucks. Starbucks will give you like a five percent off coupon or something, so you'll get rewards for doing it. Bottoms up. Uh, one of the managers, of bottoms up, is on Foursquare, and he's annoying with it. Sorry, Jeff, you are. Um, but bottoms up will do. Does like a coupon for Foursquare. Bottoms up. The bottoms most delicious pizza restaurant. Because mm. when I'm bottoms hungry, I think. Bottoms up. Mm -hmm. Located on Dock Street. Home of the 955 Comedy Club. This Christmas. Advertising. Yeah. So how do you reinforce norms? We've talked about the things that are bad form, bad adequate. How do you reinforce them so that people don't do them? There's shunning, there's shaming, there's screaming, there's hitting. Oh, I think if you just... I can't hit yeah. I just talk shit behind their back. And yeah. no. I mean, the... No, and then I mean, make them listen to the podcast yeah. so they can find out that yeah. they no, I think, uh, yeah. I don't know. How do you do it anywhere else? Yeah. The long-term process is... Isn't it kind of different? Like, if, so, if somebody's like, 
you know, uh, consciously, like, being an ass, right? Like, then you're going to approach it different, like, if, then if somebody doesn't, um, doesn't know that they're, like, breaking right. some kind of rule. Would, I mean, is that fair? Yeah. Like, if, if it's something where it's just like, hey, you should do this differently, or don't do that, that's not cool, it's fine. It's weird. I mean, like, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, just with comedy, but other stuff, like, you know, like, if people are obviously, like, breaking the rules, or just being yeah. total assholes, like, some people just don't learn their lesson, they just don't. It's just like, you know, no matter what you say or do to them, you can literally get taken my back and shit out of them. Go back next week, do whatever it is, and piss everybody off. The long term strategy with comedy, at least, is, you know, if they're habitual offenders of various things, they don't get booked. That's the truth. But the habitual offender, a lot of the habitual offenders don't care. If the guy's sole ambition is to tell five minutes every other Monday, uh, he doesn't care that he's not getting booked. He will just continue to be lame. Yeah, it's up then to, you just kind of you put your big boy pants on and you sit through his five minute set that's stolen or hacky or boring or whatever. I mean, it comes back to that comic that uh, the one place he used to do comedy was at the beach house. Yeah. And I'm not going to dignify him by, by giving his name, but uh, he committed every, you know, hack, uh, every pretty much every etiquette uh, thing, and it, and it culminated with him telling a telling a, a joke of a national touring headliner. He told that headliner's joke, and the headliner was in the room. Oh. Yeah, and we had all seen the show the night before, and we all looked at it, and we were like, wow, you said yeah. that. You went up and uh, did that guy's bit with him watching. I remember that story. And, and uh, what are you talking about? That's yeah, and uh, that's the only place he did comedy, and, uh, you know, those situations, it's like, yeah, he got shunned. I mean, that's the only place he did comedy. Um, and he would bring this guy, we're talking about, like, etiquette amongst, like, crowd etiquette, he would, he would only, his friends would be in another room at this bar, it was two rooms, you know, the beach house. He would have all his friends in the main area, not in the comedy area, then when it was his time to go on stage, he would pull them all in to watch him. He would do a set and then they would, you know, then they would voted for him, yay, they voted for him, he won. It was just because he had, it wasn't, it was funny, but he had the most people. And uh, that situation took care of itself because then he had a set of funny bone. Yeah. Why do I feel like I know who this comedian is? If you've ever done Beach House, you know him. Yeah, yeah, if you haven't, then you won't. Or I think he did Poor House a couple times, too, but yeah. that's the only place he did it, and uh, now they don't do it there anymore, so I don't know what happened to the guy. Yeah, and now you can win a, con a competition like that by bringing all your friends, but usually, the, you know, if you do that at the Clash of the Comics, they don't come in for your set and then leave. They're there the whole time drinking, so whatever. Yeah, but that at least guy... They're, it was a lot of uh, fouls committed. Yeah. You know, they, we you try to help somebody, but if they don't, if that's what like you know they don't want to do it, then you just go okay and just turn your back. It sucks, but what are you gonna do? Who are the con who, who who are the comedy police? Are they self-appointed? Chris Martin. Are they appointed <laughs> by the community? <laughs> Chris Martin. They're duly associated. In hockey, you have enforcers. In karate, it's called gooning. When somebody steps out of line, they get whacked, they get knocked down. That's like a comedy, they get whacked and get knocked down. We have Leo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Take him in the back. We have, we have Jackie, back. honestly. Oh, yeah? We have Jackie. Oh, yeah. We'll just get her to fall out. Takes him in the back. Trust me, you <laughs> don't want me to take you in the back and fall out. I know what the swing is for. That's the mic stand. Um. I don't think there really are, like there's some, you know, there's obviously the people who run the funny bone, people, you know. I think Joe Rogan's like that guy. He's yeah, <laughs> Joe Rogan is the comedy police. He's crazy he's Joe Rogan. That's, uh, sorry. Um, no pleasure. <laughs> um, that's off music. And as, uh, you know, I was, as I was told, uh, not to name drop, I'm not going to name drop, there was a comic, uh, who we've all heard of, who told us, he's like, you know, like me. He's like, yeah, they have those, you know, the hack police and all that. You know what, lighten up. Yeah. Comedy's been around for hundreds of years. You're going to cross. You're, you're going to end up doing some of stuff. Yeah. It's full. That's why it stopped. Uh, You've been too stop. talkative. I guess we wrap up the video podcast. Well, guys. Why would you keep going to the video podcast? Yeah. Well, I think we're... I feel like we're good enough that we might as well not. Honestly, I'm about to one, pass yeah. out for you. One other thing is tips, tips for audience members. Turn off your cell phones. Um, yeah, I think that's the big three. Uh, like, as an MC, uh, yeah, you want to cover Talking. the big three. 
cell phones, turn them off, talking, you know, and tip your waitress. Anyone have any thoughts on Last Con Standing this week? I don't watch it. I didn't watch it. I watched it. But I'm not going to say anything. I do. I heard Nikki was on it. That's about the only thing. Nikki Glazer was on it. Yes, exactly. And she's going on to the semifinals. Cool. Good job, Nikki. I'm, I'm thinking about watching last week's and this week's just to make it make up watching while she's on. There's that new show on Showtime, The Green Room. Yeah. With Paul Provenza. Sorry. I'm not recording. I'm not recording. Sorry. The Green Room. Yeah, where the comics are just sitting around talking. It's like another show. It's going to be an interesting show. It's pretty good because Paul Provenza. Is so I know what we're doing. No. <laughs> well, they have experience. This is the chalk order. That's on TV. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed in the chalk wall today. The last two weeks, there's been like yeah, been amazing cool. art up there. Except the 12 year old got a hold of it this time. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the semi built um, spider web. The kid that drew that is sitting over there, and I think he made so, me cry. So I'll say it wraps up. <laughs> Anything else anybody wants to talk about? To the, you're pretty much talking about the camera at this point. Yeah, my camera. Do. Thanks, Silver, for filming us. Thank Thanks, Silver. Thanks, Silver. Having an empty memory card. Yay, everybody. Go team.